it's nice having a long form tournament to to keep track of throughout throughout i, I like i like having these kind of stories i'm hoping to actually get some more stuff like this happening uh i've got i've got a couple ideas in the works there's one i've mentioned a few times and then there's one i haven't yet but uh here we go. Adila as the Warlock, Lindonan as the Farseer. Now we saw Adila play, uh, when did we, when were we watching Adila play? I guess we saw him a couple weekends ago. Cartel and I were, were watching and uh, Adila was having trouble in a Warp Spider mirror. We'll see how he handles the Farseer. Both sides going for the Double Dire Avengers right away. Are they get, both getting Banshees behind? Yes, they are, but the Farseer over here, Lindonan, trying for the early victory point pressure while uh, Adilla just kind of capping his his back points over here. You can see both. I guess I guess Lindo feels like he can just hold the VPs right away. And I think Lindo, I would classify, I guess, as a more classic Eldar player. I mean, not that Adilla hasn't been around for ages either, but when I think Eldar, I, th I always feel like when I was playing against the good Eldar players that I always felt the map control pressure right away. And that feels to me what Lindonan is doing here. He's getting the VPs right away and now he's even like charging forward, running the Farseer in so that his opponent can't really do too much about it. He's going to force his opponent to react to him as opposed to the other way around. Two generators go down right quick for Lindonan instead of the early Banshees, which to me makes me feel like that Adila should be, or sorry, yeah. Adila should be able to capitalize on this, having the larger army, having the Banshees over here. But the Farseer is just going to disengage. She says, no thanks. Not interested. And now we have like three squads chasing the Farseer around the map instead of capping anything. So really the only difference right now is one requisition point. Despite Lindonan having the smaller army. There's Rangers coming out for Adila. And a Shuriken Guardian Weapon team coming out for Lindonan. So that, I mean, again, this is looking like losing scenarios for Lindo. We're going to see how he plays. The early generators will get him uh, a nice tech lead, but that's assuming that he can, in fact, hold them. And I feel like maybe this is something we've seen more from long-term players, is going for these lighter tier ones and getting punished by the slightly heavier ones. We saw that with Riku a lot in the monthly team tournament. He was really feeling like he was dominant enough to hold tier one with just a few squads. But it often worked against him. I don't know if the same thing's going to happen here with Adila or not. But Adila, Adila, I feel like, despite Lindonan maybe being someone that's played longer than Adila. I'm not entirely sure, but Adila, I feel like, is more currently practiced than Lindo is. Or, sorry, yes. <laughs> I'm getting my names mixed up. Double Rangers, spotting the Shuriken Cannon, deciding for Double Rangers. Adila just wants to shut the Shuriken play down outright. And two sniper squads will probably do that quite well. Lindonan gets some Banshees of his own. Moves the Shuriken up. The Kinetic Shots might be able to shut this down right here, though. Banshees coming in on the flank, finding the Rangers out of position, though. The Kinetic Shot was enough to dislodge the Shuriken, but not enough to secure the engagement. Dire Avenger fight over here. This one squad of Lindonan getting perilously low, but it looks like it will be fortunate enough to escape. And Banshee's way behind enemy lines. Oh, is he paying attention? He's moving them too far forward. Okay, I was about to say, they're actually in a really good spot to move in on these Banshees and, or sorry, on these Dire Avengers and Rangers. But then again, maybe not considering they were in a crossfire between the two Ranger squads. They were risking starting to bleed a lot right there. Now, both of the Rangers? No, just one upgraded with the Pathfinder gear. Is there a Kinetic Shot available? Healing Stones goes down. Banshees take a face full of Shuriken fire. Lose a few models. Oh my gosh, the Shuriken actually retreated there. It probably wasn't necessary, but it did anyways. 
kinetic shot forcing the Farseer out of the engagement as well. As it was foreseen. And despite the early pressure from Lindonan trying to put the VPs on uh, on check here for Adilla, Adilla's up about 100 victory points so far, possibly just on the back of having a larger force. The Farseer has been doing a lot of fighting. Oh no, the, the webway gate gets spotted immediately. Still manages to get the cloaking field down. The shroud goes down, keeps everything at least partially revealed. But the Warlock's been running around the map capping things while, uh... Ooh! Ranger's finishing off that shuriken cannon. But the Farseer's kind of been working with the army. Whereas the, whereas the Warlock's been mostly solo. I don't know what that grenade was throwing at. I don't know if that was a missed hotkey or what. But, uh, now, now Lindona's looking pretty rough. He's down to two generators to three and, uh... Triple cap against him, now down by almost 200 victory points. It happens real fast when you get triple cap, man. The VPs just bleed away in the blink of an eye. Lindona losing the shuriken cannon too is uh, is pretty rough. He's going to have to play very tight, he's, and he's probably just not going to be able to engage directly at this point, all things considered. He's just going to have to run around the map, cap where he can, harass wherever he can. I mean, fortunately enough, and as Eldar, you can do that quite well, but of course, you're also facing Eldar. Webway Network starting to pop up around the map for Adilla. Grenade goes down, takes a nice chunk off. Meanwhile, Banshee's back here, hacking through gens. Two generators down. I don't think Lindona's going to be able to get to tier two anytime soon. Lindo did repurchase the Shuriken Cannon. I guess, I guess he needs something else. But when you're first, when you're forced to buy a suboptimal unit in a, in a matchup that's already like this. You know, there's already two ranger squads on the field. Do you really want to be buying a shuriken cannon? Probably not. And then, oh man, it's just going to immediately flank and throw a grenade at. The grenade doesn't connect but forces it off the field. And things seem to be going from bad to worse for Lindo. Dill is heading into tier two. Lindona not terribly far behind, but not in a great position either. 250 points down, very little map control, a smaller army. That's a lot of hills to climb before you can start approaching the mountain that is victory. Shuriken Cannon finds itself the Warlock. The Warlock's not going to be able to finish the cap, but it looks like Adilla is paying attention. No drop micro over here. No easy wins for Adilla. Or easy wins for Lindona. I wouldn't say this is easy for Adilla, but he's, uh... He's looking quite confident. A lot of pew pew. So are rangers required in an Eldar mirror? It seems like they might be. It sure feels like it in this matchup. If one side goes for shurikens and the other side goes for rangers, it just looks... It looks like a real easy match. Of course, Eldar don't have anything like jump squads early on to break heavy weapon positions, but the rangers do more than enough work in that regard. A Wraith Lord coming out. Lindonan will be tier two, so he'll at least be able to answer the Wraith Lord a little bit with some anti-vehicle options. Lindonan does have a lot of requisition as well. But we're not gonna be seeing anything like a Wraith Lord. We might see, he might be able to get to the point of a Falcon, but I'm starting to doubt that as the Banshees are moving in again on his gen farm. Banshees fall back. 
Easily enough. Yeah, I don't know. It just it just doesn't look like Lindona can can do anything against this. Like he's push he catches the Rangers out sometimes, but they just retreat. Oh, he gets the kill on the squad, actually. That's pretty significant. He might actually get the second Ranger squad, and just as I say, things are looking dire. Can the Banshees finish it off? If he can get that second squad, wow. Two squads go down, and it might suddenly be a whole new game. That's still just the start of a potential comeback. But Rangers completely caught out of position by the Banshees. The second squad needed to pull back a little bit to get the correct retreat path. When you're when you're in this middle point, say right about here, almost always your squad is going to retreat this way instead of up back where the Wraith Lord is. There was a panic retreat there instead of the re the correct repositioning. The two Rangers go down. There's still a Wraith Lord on the field, and Lynn Donan is still 300 points down. In an even match, that simply means you're going to lose. Being 300 points down, you're going to lose. He needs to take the advantage at this point, and he needs to convert these squad kills into some map control and some more punishes for his opponent. Simply killing the squads is not enough if you cannot capitalize on it. Swiftness activated by the Warlock, trying to take out the Farseer. Will she escape the Wrath of the Banshees? It looks like she should be safe. They cut off the chase. And a nice looking ethereal slash. Sending Banshees flying every which way, taking them down to about half of their health. Lindonan decides to pull those back before he starts taking losses. Farseer and Warlock both level two. An Altar coming down here as well. Is this for Lindonan? Yes, it is. Just trying to get, I guess, more squads on the field. The Altarch is a great tool for pressuring map when you're ahead on squads. I think this might actually be one of the times that it's good to have an Altarch. But of course, if you just immediately lose her to Banshees, that's not the way you want it to go. Has to be very careful. I mean, Banshee squads and a walker. That is a scary situation. Altarch jumps up, wanting to engage the Dire Avengers, but there's still not much out here to... Uh, to challenge this Wraith Lord. As much as Lindona was doing okay, he did lose his setup team, and without that, the Wraith Lord continues to walk around unabated, so it doesn't look like taking out those Rangers is going to solve his problem. The Rangers honestly might have started to be past their point of uh, real effectiveness anyways. So taking them out at this stage might not just, it just might not be enough. The points are still ticking down, and he's down to almost 100 VPs. Which, you know, is, is often the end of the game. This Altarch also uh, just not able to get anything done, being constantly harangued by this uh, Wraith Lord. The Wraith Lord's kind of just been solo saying no to the Altarch. Another nice engagement here from the Farseer and the Banshees, though. Two grenades go down right on the feet of the squads. Doesn't really connect with much, though. And the Farseer and Banshees are just going to disengage, continue to uh, not fight the Wraith Lord. And the Farseer versus the Warlock here, even with a Singing Spear, I feel like the Warlock might win this. Certainly if there's a, if, if there's a Wraith Lord coming with a giant sword. One hundred three to four sixty nine. Another Wraith Lord. Oh my gosh, another Wraith Lord. I think will really seal the deal. Lindonan had an opportunity briefly, but uh, it was an opportunity squandered. If he man if he had managed to keep the Bright Lance, or I mean, I guess it was still a Shuriken at the time, but it could have easily upgraded to a Bright Lance. If the Bright Lance had managed to stay on the field with the Altark and the Farseer, I think that would have been one thing. But without it, the, the Wraith Lords are just fearless. So I don't think anything can be done. I 
I think we're just kind of kind of watching the tragic end here. I don't know what Lindona and Kadu to really get back into this at this stage. Doesn't have a lot of resources, but among other things, he really just needs anti-vehicle. But the problem is he also needs map control. So he needs he needs mobile anti-vehicle. He needs he needs to kill a squad, get a lucky engagement probably against this at this stage. Killing the Banshees would be a good start. But the Wraith Lord's there to support. They can't they can't chase those Banshees home lest they risk taking some special attacks from that big mean melee walker. And uh not a bad effort from Lindo this time around, but uh I don't think it's gonna take him too far. If another squad goes down, that'll surely be the end. The two Dire Avengers aren't going to be able to hold against the Autark. It looks like Lindonan's going to fight till the bitter end. Refusing to give it up. I can respect that. The Farseer with the Singing Spear does do heavy melee damage, but it's still not enough to deal with these walls. Oh my gosh, this Wraith Lord isn't moving into position. Will it get the kill? Not quite. It was a little... There's a, there's a few second delay on him moving into position. He could have taken out that Farseer, but... uh was a bit too slow. Lindona getting a Wraith Lord of his own now. The Autark is so fast, so obnoxious when you get to this late stage Eldar game. When you're when you're at low VPs against an Eldar and they have an Autark, it feels it feels nigh impossible to do anything about their map control. Alright, we have a Wraith Lord out now. Brightland's coming online for Lindona. He, it looks like he's taking it over to the far side, though. I guess to, to try to scare off the Banshees. But he has so little time. I feel like he really just needs to push push the side of the map with the two VPs. Farseer manages to poke the Banshee Elksark off of the map there, and it looks like uh, it's all or nothing at this point. For Lindonan to push this left side of the map with the two victory points up on the high ground, but there are two Wraith Lords waiting. Ooh, and a sneaky cloak. Oh, he revealed it. The Wraith Lord is spotted. Has he seen the second one though? I think he has. Two swings of the sword, that's two dire Avengers down. A Wraith Lord with a Bright Lance. One has a shuriken. Did they both upgrade to shurikens over here? Yes. So there's not a Bright Lance in return, but it's still simply a two-on-one. And with the with the Warlock Cloak, these these Wraith Wraith Lords are uh, are going to be even more difficult to take down. The Cloak of Shadows keeping them stealth, and there's there's no detection out here either. So the game is effectively done, unless a miracle happens. It's all over for Lindon, and this time around, we'll see if. Lindo can manage to get another match. Or whether it's just going to be another 2-0. Oh. One O for Adila in the Eldar Mirror. Not a bad match. I mean, taking out taking out the double rangers was cool, but it just it was too little too late. He was already way too behind by that point. And then wasn't able to capitalize on it and still lost a setup team immediately after that. All right, this time Lindona going for the Warp Spider with Adilla. This is where Adilla seemed to have trouble before. The Warp Spider versus the Warlock last we saw Adilla was not going very well for Adilla at all. Let's see if uh, this is what Lindona needs to get into this. Farseer nearly always wins the 1v1 versus Warlock with similar war gear. Her DPS is much higher, and Guide only adds to that. Is that true? She just have a higher attack speed, or...? I thought the Warlock was, like, the better brute force fighter, and the Farseer would need Guide to overcome that. Shows what I know. All right, we see Lindonan actually prioritizing power here, going for a triple Dire Avenger, a dire Avenger open, and Banshee's coming out for Adilla, so I would assume with a triple Dire Avengers, we might see Entangling Web on the Warp Spider or something along those lines. I think the Warp Spider will make Rangers a lot less effective because the Warp Spider can just jump in on them and uh, either pressure with range damage or simply tie them up in melee to negate their sniping abilities. Yeah. 
Where's Spider catching out some dire Avengers? Already taking one squad down to about half health. Banshee's moving in on the far side, though, going to force the retreat from one, if not both, of these squads. Yeah, upon spotting it, Adila chooses to engage. Lindonit's capturing the bottom side of the map, and War Spider going to get the center VP as well. And Adila is going for the Rangers. So we'll see the same thing from Adila as we saw last time. But I'm not sure the Rangers will be as effective this time around. I don't know if Lindonan was expecting that, and that when that's why he went for the triple dire Avengers, or whether he just feels like this is a more successful build with a Warp Spider and an Eldar matchup. Destructor goes down. Looks like it did some decent damage over here. The dire Avengers have to be careful. Yeah, they don't want to retreat that way through the banshees. Warp Spider again denying caps on the mid. The Rangers have revealed themselves. And see exactly, yeah, the War Spider is just going to be trying to focus down these Rangers, causing bleed wherever he can. No upgrades on him quite yet. The Banshees are just standing here, taking a little extra damage. So all three Dire Avenger squads trying to focus down the Warlock. The, oh no, the War Spider. The Warlock doesn't move to engage. He lets him live. I don't know what happened there. I thought the Warlock was in a perfect position to finish out the Warp Spider, but he moved in a strange position. I don't know if it just wasn't on his radar or what. Lindonan going for some Rangers now as well. Double Rangers on one side, single on the other. There is an additional generator down for Lindo, whereas Adila has nothing so far. We saw Lindonan with the faster tech last game too, but uh, ultimately fell behind. The enemy is claiming a victory point. I'm not sure if it will be so this time. Uh, yeah, I can't tell if the barrel's messed up his pathing or what. I think you can walk through this, right? This is the spot. I thought you could walk through that, but maybe you can. Maybe you need to jump over that. All right, the ranger duel begins. We're now in a company of heroes match with everyone getting super excited over snipes and counter snipes. Of course, rangers still are three model squads, not like Rangers and Co. War Spire should be fine getting out of there. I'd be surprised if he went down. We must arm for even cooler warfare. Escalation cancelled. We trust in your guidance. Looks like Lindonan can't oh my gosh, there's just gonna be a full on Ranger War. And a full on Ranger War is the player with the Banshees at an advantage or a disadvantage. War Spider does have the enhanced targeters, so he's got longer range and he's got more of it. Lots of hurty from lots of far away. This time though, Dill is the one on the, the wrong side of the victory points. Grenades come down, they don't quite connect. Will the second one, looks like it's a little late. The first one too early, the second too late. You guys gotta work on your grenade timings. You gotta get those ruby grenades. I don't have much, but the one thing I have is some pretty sweet grenades. Not to brag, I once threw a grenade off a cliff in Fedrid Folly and killed a squad of Hormigons. It was great. <laughs> uh, Rangers opening fire on one another. The sniper duel continues. Oh my gosh, is this the end? Snake! <laughs> Alright, Lindonan. Seems to be playing much better this time around. Not purchasing shurikens against double rangers seems to be uh, step number one in securing a reasonable early game against a double ranger play. Warp Spider might be step number two. Might actually take out this squad. The teleport into a sweet position turns that last ranger into Eldar Bits. And another full route. This is a uh, this is look this is a complete change. Lindonan's build order has changed, even going for now a third ranger. Looking to drive the point home in tier one, I suppose. The 
Warlock finds himself some dire Avengers. Picks one off. Leaves a little blood splatter there on the ground. The way the the way the guardian weapons just drop to the ground, their little derpy guns. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the rangers are just continuing. Is this what Eldar mirrors are? It's just sniper fights? If you can't beat them, join them. Triple Dire Avengers, triple rangers. And then Donan says, you guys, you want to play ranger games, we'll play some ranger games. And right now, he is winning quite handily. This time around, Adila's the one that's down by about 200 victory points. A grenade comes in, doesn't really connect to anything because it hit the boxes. Always a very frustrating situation. We are losing a victory objective. Most of us that play this game have been there where you try to click a specific point, but it takes the, the game takes the input as that you were trying to put the grenade down on a piece of cover. Which is effectively never what you want to do. Because half the time if you do that, it'll still register the units behind that cover as protected from the grenade blast. It's the worst. Alright, Lynn Donan's going into tier 2. Adila, probably not far himself. Only managed to take down a single generator there, but most of the map has been in Lynn Donan's control for the majority of the game. Some bleed is starting to stack against Lindonan's Rangers. But of course the Warp Spire just shredding all this light Eldar infantry and continuing to teleport around and be a, a real headache for Adila. The Warlock hasn't really been doing much. He's kind of been fighting independently of the rest of the army. Just capping the map where he can, but ultimately not accomplishing too much. Adila only about a minute behind on the tier 2 purchase. The upgrade here. Lindona will pretty easily be able to hold out for either a Falcon or a Wraith Lord. That's what I'd expect to see. He might even have enough requisition and red to maybe just call in some Warp Spiders in addition to that. He's sitting at almost 700. A Warp Spider call in here I think would actually be pretty nasty. It would just increase the already, like, it just, it takes what is already range superiority and kind of just bumps it up another notch. And takes away Adila's ability to kind of, uh, kind of take refuge anywhere. If you have both the Warp Spider upgraded with his ranged upgrades and a Warp Spider squad running around the map harassing things like Rangers and Dire Avengers, I don't think there's a good answer. He's going right for the Wraith Lord. I thought, the, does the Warp Spider calling cost much power now? I thought it was relatively cheap, if not free on power. But that might have been changed. Oh man, the Dire Avengers going for a grenade. One gets turned to bits in response to that. Oh man, but look at this one! I don't know how, it did, see this is what I'm talking about with throwing grenades on cover. That grenade was like sitting on the edge of this rock, so the Dire Avengers that were on this side did not get hit, whereas the, the Rangers on this side did get hit. Some nice looking retreat grenades there, tagging a few models on retreat. 350 wreck and 150 red. That's what I thought. I thought it might have even been 400 wreck, but I wasn't I wasn't entirely sure. I thought it was no power, so... So where are the, where are the worst fighters, Lindo? End the game. Purchase the Warp Spiders. He might have something else in mind. A Wraith Lord's coming out for Adila. But there's already one out for Lindonan. 187 to 443 and uh, a complete reversal from the previous game. Triple Rangers just continuing to bleed. Everywhere. The Dire Avenger Exarch adds so much damage reduction to the squad. It's supposedly only 20%, but it sure as heck feels like more. Grenade! 
War Spider now fully upgraded with the Entangling Web as well to make sure... Guarantee those Banshees can't get anything done. Ooh, and the Warlocks say goodbye. Picked up, skewered, and dropped on the ground with the Warlock going down. Adilla throws in the GG, and it's going to be 1-1 one to one in this Eldar Mirror. Let's move on to the final match. It's 1-1. One to one. This is the decider. The winner moves on to the semifinals. The loser is out because we are now in the single elimination stage of this tournament. We're going to Vulcan Pits. And uh, both players better be trying their hardest because this is the, both of their last lives. Will it be more Rangers? Will things switch up? We're going to find out right now. This is going to be a good one. Stick around. Adilla versus Lindonan. Lindo sticking with the Warp Spider, finding that it his appears to be Adilla's Achilles heel. The Adilles heel? Is that what we're going to call that? Dire Avengers coming out. Will we see Banshees? Or will we just see Rangers? What did Adilla think of that last matchup? Adilla's sticking with the sticking with the Banshees. Okay. All right, so we have triple Dire Avengers opening versus two Dire Avengers and a Banshee squad. Oh, Sphenoms is here. He knows what's up. Don't spoil it for us, Sphenoms. We don't know who's going to win. It's exciting. Adding support structure. All right, triple Dire Avengers. Banshee's coming in. First blood goes to Adilla, picking off the first Dire Avenger model. Ooh, and a nice looking Destructor. Normally we see Destructor used as an opener, but right there it almost wiped the squad. Took out a couple models as well. A nice opening there for Adilla, but uh, the Banshee is kind of on the wrong side of this engagement. Dire Avengers moving into support. Should probably take some cover though. Support structure. Like All right, 500 to 485. War Spider trying to return the kills here, taking out a couple dire vendors that uh, were lost so far. I think it's only the heroes that have killed anything. The Warlock got a couple kills. War Spider got a couple kills. Power looks about even on both sides. I'm assuming we're going to see more Rangers as it seems like both players have decided that is the superior lineup in an Eldar Mirror. All about that Ranger play in Tier 1. And let's see what Adela can get done with these Banshees. Does he, he doesn't, he's been getting these Banshees, but we haven't seen kind of the usual... Sometimes I expect to see something like channeling runes come out to support those Banshees. We haven't seen that from Adela. All we really saw was the Ethereal uh, Blade, or the... Uh, what is it? The Witch Blade of Kyrnos. So gens go down for both players. Both players looking to tech up. This time, neither player going for that early tier 1.5 squad. Now, Adil Lindonan's been doing this the whole time, and maybe Attila's reacting to that, saying, I know he's going to go for, for a power-heavy start, so he, he doubles down. He even drops all three gens right away, and even an extra one over here. Oh, my gosh. This is this is some interesting head games here. So this is, this is Adila, I think, playing to his opponent's he knows that Lindonan likes dropping the early generators and doesn't get his fourth squad out very quickly, so Adila's just going to ride with the two Dire Avengers and the Banshees and scream up in the tech race. Has a lot of reinforcing to do. We have a webway coming down. Is Adila just trying to... to is Adila just trying to hard tech into tier 3? Or sorry, 2? 
I don't see you. There's no aspect upgrades. There's no war gear upgrades. He spent zero power. I grow suspicious. And I would assume Lindonan is as well if he's keeping track of that sort of thing. Although Lindo seems to be on the same path. He has purchased one aspect upgrade. But that's still relatively cheap. And I think he did spot this extra generator over here. So he probably knows what's up. Oh my gosh, yeah, Dilla's just hard teching into tier 2. Oh, this game's gonna get wacky. The escalation is real. Both players, at just a few minutes into the game, heading into tier 2 with zero power expenditure. Crack shot going down on the Warp Spider. Not enough to scare off the Banshees, though. Warp Spider's probably just going to draw them back and try to get them suppressed and then teleport forward. He will lose a single generator, but it doesn't look like it's going to be that impactful. Meanwhile, continuing to cap all the ma all the resource points, or sorry, victory points, well ahead of his opponent, a triple cap now in favor of Lindonan. Grenade whiffs on the Banshees, but uh, the damage is done. The points are kept. Lindonan looking very strong here. Both players heading into tier two. Adilla should be ahead as far as tech. Adilla's going to get that Wraith Lord out very quickly, if that's the plan. This is probably one of the fastest Wraith Lord timings you can hit. Because he filled up his gens, he got everything down, he spent zero power, and he like almost perfectly times the requisition income with the power income there to get a Wraith Lord out. So if you're looking for a new Eldar build and you can hold a light tier one against someone, I guess uh, this is something to keep in mind. Granted, like I said, I think this is Adilla playing to the fact that he knows Lindonan goes for those early gens. Then again, Lindonan recognized what was happening. He spotted the extra generator. There's, it, it's, it's hard to spot some of the subtleties in this game sometimes, especially if you're just kind of a casual player or a casual viewer. But the, the reactions to stuff like this because if Lindonan had gone for his regular build and hadn't spotted the extra generators here and it had maybe gotten some more rangers or a shuriken cannon, he would be in a really bad position right now. Instead, he teched up to tier 2 super fast. He got his falcon out as well. So it's going to be falcon versus wraith lord in tier 2. Now the Falcon plays very well with the Triple Dire Avengers, obviously. Again, another very late grenade. Manages- oh, it gets two! That gets actually more than I expected. Falcon versus Wraith Lord. I don't- I mean... If the Wraith Lord will have to see if it goes for a Bright Lance or not. I think Adil is waiting to see what the Tier 2 purchase is to decide whether or not we're going to see that. Now... Lindonan has a lot of resource left. Maybe we'll see the Warp Spider call in this time around? If we see the Warp Spiders, the Haywire Grenade along with the Falcon could be enough to scare off or potentially even kill the Wraith Lord, depending on how low the Falcon manages to knock it down. Lindonan go- oh, just purchasing Warp Spiders the easy way. He might not actually have the red this time yet. Last game, the Tier 1 was much longer. There was a lot of red out here. This time he doesn't actually have the red to call in the Warp Spiders. But he will make the purchase. Oh, and Adila going for Falcon behind the Wraith Lord. This is a high tech tier 2 army right here. A Walker and a Falcon transport. There's probably a Bright Lance. Oh, yeah, the Bright Lance is already up. The Falcon's in a lot of trouble here, actually. Getting pursued by the opposing Falcon. Another couple shots is all it's going to take. This Wraith Lord goes for the kill. Falcon out of control, crashes into the power node. And this is suddenly looking very good for Adilla. Two vehicles now out on the field next to nothing. The War Spiders are out of here, but it's way too late to protect the Falcon. Lindonan still has better map control, but that's probably going to change now with both of these vehicles out here stomping around the map largely unopposed. There's a shirk, a Guardian Weapons team coming out. You can bet a lot of money that that's going to be turned into a Bright Lance before very long. A couple big swings go down. 
Yep, Bright Lands coming in. Things are dicey. All right, Bright Lands coming out. Trying to defend the power farm, but not doing a whole lot. The gen farms are going to go down. Crackshot is activated, but it's still too far away to actually be any real threat to these vehicles. Now, Lindon has. This is this is gonna this is gonna be a tricky situation because with the two vehicles out and still nothing out here to contest them. Other than the Braid Lance, there's there's the Warp Spiders, obviously, but it's still a lot to cut through. These things are these things are damaged, but they're finally going to get a patch job back here. Adila's still on the backside of of the victory points here. The the Warp Spiders still proving very effective on this map. The the victory points are actually somewhat close together. They're only about a screen away, so you can kind of you can kind of jump around pretty quickly. Let's see, the Merciless Witchblade. What do we have on the Warp Spider? Still just the Enhanced Targeters. No weapon upgrade, no armor upgrade either. A few Banshees falling on approach. It's just so much range damage. The Warp Spiders weren't even there. Imagine if the Warp Spiders were there. Those Banshees would have immediately lost several models. Alright, the Falcon's fixed up. The, these vehicles need to get back out on the field. I know I understand the threat of the Haywire Brightlands combo, but I feel like Adila should still be winning this. At least being able to hold his gems. 292 to 404 right now. Adila's still down by about 100 victory points. The Wraith Lord a bit spooked to engage. Doesn't want to get haywired. A nice little grenade shot there, trying to get the decap here right in the face of all of this, in face of the Falcon, in the face of the Wraith Lord. Crack shot on the Bright Lance. Forcing the Wraith Lord back. And that quickly, all of these all of these vehicles are down to half health. Lindonan deciding to repurchase a Falcon. Okay. I I'm hmm. I guess it makes sense. The Falcon's just great against everything. And now that you have a Bright Lance to back it up, the, it can't be hunted down by the Wraith Lord. And you still have you still have the snare opportunity where Adila doesn't have that at all. It looks like Adila lost a Dire Avenger squad at some point during all of this in addition to all that. Oh my gosh, the Warlock's doing what he can, but it's just so much damage. I'm not sh I'm I, like, I don't know if just Banshees are not a good purchase in this matchup against a Warp Spider, but it sure feels that way, doesn't it? I feel like in the Warlock Farseer matchup, they were fine, but in this matchup... I feel like I've seen them do so little in these past couple games. Lindonan proved that he's still an Eldar force to be reckoned with. Banshee's in on the flank here, but this ranged blob is so difficult to approach. Oh my gosh, the Banshees are just getting shredded. Look at how fast they're going down. This might be a dead Dire Avenger squad if the Warlock can get the final hit. He does. One squad goes down. Everything's trying to punch this Warlock to the ground. Do they have enough range damage to finish him off? It doesn't look like they do. Oh, wait, but the Warp Spider has a teleport. He's path blocked. Oh, my gosh, but he gets the final shot and he will trade. Or won't he? 
There's no way the warlock, the war spider gets out of there. Incredible. That, I mean, that was a little bit of luck. I'll be honest. That was a little bit of luck. The fact that the Wraith Lord didn't get the parting shot there. Look at this lone, brave, dire Avenger over here for Lindona. I mean, it's just brave to even do this. Oh, the Banshees want it. Is he paying attention? Is he paying attention? I don't think he is. Oh, no, run away. Oh, it's way too late. Oh. Oh, it's brutal. I, I think that was more blood than is inside of an elbow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. The Banshees just bleed so... Like, every time he approaches, just approaching with the Banshees costs him, like, 80 wreck. Just to get into range. Adil is heading into Tier 3, though. I don't know to what end. The Falcon Shield, surely. A Seer Council? I don't think so. Maybe a Fire Prison, perhaps. Yeah, that Dire Avenger got smacked so hard by that uh, Executioner that it, he just got zapped right into the warp he got hit so hard. Dill is still down by about 80 victory points, but uh, both sides have formidable armies. They've both taken some minor losses. This can still go any direction. I would say that Lindona's been the more consistently in control of this game. There was a brief period after losing the first Falcon that that wasn't the case, but he managed to bring it back around. He stalled long enough. He got his, he got his forces together. He rallied and got the second Falcon out here. So now there's a Falcon and a Wraith Lord on each the side. The main advantage right now is that Adila is in Tier 3. And if a Fire Prism comes out, that's that's kind of what I feel like is the best purchase here. If a Fire Prism comes out, that's going to take the ranged advantage away from Adila. Or sorry, from Lindona. But this is kind of all hinging on vehicle combat. This is one of the more vehicle-focused games I've seen in this game in a while. Having both the walkers and transports out as the anchors to both team compositions. The Banshees are pretty beat up. Oh, the entangling web! I forgot he was equipped with it. Stops the Banshees in their tracks, which would have been a one engagement and a potentially a downed warlock. The entangling web saves it. Great play from Lindo so far. More Warp Spires coming out? Yes, it is. We have and it's going to be a Seer Council. I don't know how you feel about that. Granted, there's not... There's only really, like, one big melee deterrent. And that's, that's, the, that's the entangling web. Of course, the walker itself is pretty mean, too. I'm sure we'll be seeing the Falcon Energy Shield here shortly. But if the Banshees... Uh, if the Banshees and Seer Council can close, it, it, it will be significant. But that seems like a big if against all this range damage. Wow! I wasn't expecting that Brightland shot to finish off the Falcon, but that's a second Falcon down for Lindonan. And uh, the, the Seer Council is revealed. The Falcon's moving up. Oh my gosh, I don't know why. There's still a Bright Lance up there. Entangling Web needs to be brought into consideration. Even with the Distortion Field, the Entangling Web is enough to force off the Seer Council. One Warlock does go down. The Falcon still doesn't have its shield if he loses the Falcon at this point. Oh my gosh, all these vehicles are so low for Adila. He needs to retreat and get them healed up. 
enough. The Falcon needs a shield desperately. It's level three. There's no reason to lose this thing in tier three, but everything's getting ripped apart. He can't stay on the field at all to repair this thing. The Banshees are a little AFK on the far side. They need to be moving in on the flank to take out this Bright Lance. The Seer Council now moving in, trying to do something about the Bright Lance, but they've already lost a couple models. Adila's kind of engaging in an awkward way with these... He, I think he needs to move the melee squads together. I would even go so far to say that he really needs to get the, the Warlock on the field as well. Oh my gosh, are the Banshees going to take out the Bright Lance? They do! That's pretty significant. Okay, the Falcon does get the shield. Man, if that Falcon had gone down, things would be in a very different state right now. But as it stands, the Falcon finally gets its energy shield. Lindonan heads into Tier 3, but uh, seems to have a less less superior army at this stage of the game. A shielded falcon adds so much on the field sustain, but Adila still needs to be aware of the victory point situation. It's 145 to 352. And dual war spiders are still going to be so dangerous. Both sides trying to set up some webways around the map. And that's the thing with the entangling web is now there's two melee squads. I still, I still want to say that I, I, I would have preferred a, a fire prison, but we'll see if the Seer Council can get anything done. It just feels like with a walker on the field and two squads of war spiders and entangling web, it's so hard for them to close without bleeding. I feel like that's one of the things holding Adela back is the constant bleed from the Banshees and now add the Seer Council on top of that. I feel like, oh no, the double haywires come down. The Falcon is completely locked in place. The shield is down. He needs to make sure he doesn't reveal his rear armor. The shield regenerates very quickly. So long as he can keep the repair up, the Falcon might be all right. He needs to turn the shield on. He does just in the nick of time. The Bright Lance is still continuing to blast away here. And it goes down! The Shielded Falcon is down! Oh my gosh. How many Falcons have we seen die this game? Three? This level 3 Wraith Lord is about to be level 4 by the looks of it. Repairs trying to come in. The Seer Council bleeds a couple more models. Another Haywire stops the kill, buys some time. Now can he, can he stagger these Haywires? It looks like he can. The Haywire comes down again, will it be enough? Huge plays coming in from Lindo, trying to keep this game alive. The value of these War Spiders has been insane this game. Adila's Wraith Lord does escape. The Warlock buys a little more time, does retreat, has plenty of health to do so. But again, just looking at the army comps, we have three melee squads against Lindonan's entirely ranged army that can teleport around, can hide behind and maneuver around the Wraith Lord. The Wraith Lord upgraded with Wraith Moan as well, and this time we're seeing the Fire Prism from Lindonan. So the ranged superiority is just going to get worse and worse. I don't see how Adil is going to be able to approach this at this point. The warp, the, the warp spider has entangling web. The warp prism is going to be tons of ranged knockback. I feel, I'm just feeling like the seer council hasn't made its worth known at this point in the stage. What I kind of expected to see was was something like something like the the cloak of shadows on the Warlock, and then the Warlock just rolling around with his melee squad to crush crush these uh, wimpy range boys. But as it stands, he seems to keep, he, he always seems to be moving in everything independently. The Warlock see out here on its own, the, the Seer Council up here, the Banshees over here. I feel like if you're going to go that kind of ranged firepower versus Versus what's over here, it's just... You need something else. You need something else to support, and I feel like maybe Cloak of Shadows is it? The Fire Prism has been revealed. Enemy 
Nice looking fire prison. You must forestall the coming duel. I don't know. I don't. I, this is. This is starting to look insurmountable. Adila's put on a good show, but it's it's starting to look like Lindona just might be the master of the Eldar mirror here. Your council finally closes, but guess what? Teleport gets away. Not scared. And every time there's just every every time he loses at least one Seer Council model, he he's lost three Banshee models, but he normally loses at least two. The bleed is so significant, and look at like the like you can tell. Like look at this. 900 requisition to 200. Incomparable army sizes, the, the, the comparable purchases throughout the game, and comparable uh, requisition control here and there. I mean, I would say Lindonan's a little bit ahead on the map control, but Adila was so dominant in the beginning of Tier 2 that I think it's now just kind of evening out. I think most of this is due to Banshee and Seer Council. Oh, Lindonan's got Okay, here we go. Look, I mean, look at all. How do you approach this? Two War Spider squads, fully upgraded, probably level three or so by now. Let's see, level three, level two. I mean, the the, the Seer Council just melts. Even that was with a distort field up. That's how fast they died. The War Spider Exarch is level five. There's a fire prism. There's entangling web. Nothing's ever approaching this army. I think we're just beyond the point of no return here. Oh my gosh. Did you see how fast that warlock died? Adila's finally getting a fire prism, but it looks like, yeah, he's throwing in the towel. I think the fire prism should have been the first purchase. I In tier three, he either should have gotten the fire prism, or maybe if he was going seer council, I feel like the cloak of... Sh oh, Torpid actually says in chat the cloak of shadows would have been good. Well, now I feel validated in my suggestion for cloak of shadows. When one of the when one of the tough guys in chat says like yeah that would that would be good then then I feel I feel like I did it I did it guys. <laughs> Not surprised he didn't GG. Oh well I mean you know sometimes it happens. Adila had such a strong open too I thought it was gonna go to his side. With the way he aced that that early Falcon and then had out one of his own. When we saw when we saw the board was a war, a, uh, a Wraith Lord and a Falcon versus a bunch of infantry. I just thought, Adila's got this. This is going to be over quick. But uh, Lindona, man, was on point, and uh, Warp Spiders are good. I don't know if you guys knew this, but uh, Warp Spiders, pretty good. Pretty good unit. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. That's going to be the end of the cast. Uh, Lindonan takes it 2-1. to one. He's going on to the semifinals along with some other players. Uh, we watched a few of the games today, but that will be this coming Saturday. I'm not sure if I'll be casting it live or not, or whether we'll be doing it on Monday as we've been doing the past few weeks. But uh, the Russian Dawn of War League has been bringing us some pretty awesome games. I'm glad they organized it. So props to that crew and the players for making that happen. Woo! That was a cool game. Oh man, that was very cool.